Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories by Significant Entrepreneurs. And I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio is Orly Zewi, brand architect with Zewi. Orly, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Fran. It's a pleasure. Oh, it's totally cool. <laughs> you know, we were talking earlier about branding yes. and being understated. And I noticed that you've got some fabulous jewelry. Oh, well, thank so you. I wondered if you could give a brief story, <laughs> since we were talking about the importance of stories. Right. Um, a brief story about your brooch. So uh, when my mother passed away, she, I, I inherited all of her jewelry, and mm -hmm. she collected, you know, hundreds of brooches. She was a really mm -hmm. big brooch person, and. Uh, you know, I just remember this one uh, was one of her favorites, so I always wear it when I'm going to do something special. Ah, perfect, <laughs> perfect. I love it. Gives me a little, you know, a little, little spirit of my mom there. You know, spirit is important. It and is. speaking about entrepreneurial spirit, there we go. one of the things that I always love to know is sort of what was that significant moment right. that really put you on the path of entrepreneurship. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, actually, you know, it's funny. I was thinking, uh, I was thinking about this, and you know, my dad was an inventor, mm -hmm. and he was always coming up with these great ideas, and uh, and he founded several companies, and he was really kind of my early role model for what working look could look like, mm -hmm. that you actually had more freedom and creativity when you worked for yourself. Um, but when I thought about the moment, and I and I remember this really clearly, I was working. Um, I was working for a corporation, and I was hired as a senior design manager. And it started to dawn on me that I actually wasn't doing the job that they hired me to do, Ooh, <laughs> which was so? which how was so? managing a creative team, right? So oh, my job was to job. manage the creative team. <laughs> However, right. what I did was I um, decided to create a resource, a design resource library, because I saw a broken creative process. And mm -hmm. as every good entrepreneur mm -hmm. will do, you see a problem and you say, "Well, let's see if we can fix it." Right. 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 Um, so the idea was to 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 fix a broken creative process that had designers really acting more as order, order takers, mm -hmm. and not really as designers. So I mm -hmm. thought. Uh, well, if I create a resource library, then I bring people together from all the different departments so they can learn about the value of design. And mind you, this was 16 years ago. Okay. When wow. the idea of design and business was not even being talked no. about. No. But um, so I've been collecting articles and, mm -hmm. and books about this, you know, since then. But um, and, and the amazing thing is that the library was actually a great success, but in the process I got fired. <laughs> okay, because you were being too innovative. Probably. I was being too innovative <laughs> and interest. But the, the takeaway for me was that I was so passionate about this mm. library, you know, and I couldn't understand why no one else <laughs> actually cared about this. And it dawned on me that, you know, what I really wanted was to be that passionate in my day to day work life. So um, when I had the so based on that experience, even though I had actually an opportunity to take a very high-powered, high-level corporate job at a different mm -hmm. company, I turned it down. Wow. At a time when people didn't do that either, <laughs> and I started innovative, a, uh, well, or <laughs> foolish, depending on your point of view. And Enter so, and take risks. Yeah, you well, risk. sometimes we take risks. You know, at the time, it it seemed you know different than it does now. Mm -hmm. It seems innovative and. Mm -hmm forward thinking, but right. not <laughs> at the time it probably wasn't Nail that way. biting and okay. A little bit, a little yeah. bit. And, um, and what happened was that instead I started consulting practice and that was 15 mm. years ago. Wow, 15 years ago. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about passion. I mean, yeah. 15 years is a long time to hold passion. Right. So how do you hold the passion? You know, how'd you do it year five, year right. 10, and even now? So that's a, it's an interesting question. And you know, we live in a time where actually, I think we live in an amazing time. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I tell this mm -hmm. to my kids all the time. Of course, they don't know any other way because mm -hmm. this is the, what they're born into. But what I've realized is that the way I stay passionate is I'm constantly, first of all, I've reinvented myself three or four times since mm -hmm. I started the consulting practice. Mm -hmm. I also do a lot of different things. So I, right. I teach and I'm also a public speaker. Mm -hmm. And I facilitate workshops, uh, and uh, and now I'm writing a book. So right. that's how I stay passionate. I find different um, different venues for the things I'm interested in, and mm -hmm. I guess I am, 
you know, foolish enough to think that other people will actually be interested. <laughs> but now, if, come on, as a woman, let's, say, let's right. bring out that confidence. Right, let, let's, let's pull back. <laughs> Not foolish, but, you know, maybe uh, confident enough mm -hmm. to think. Great. Let's try that word right. better, yes. yes. Uh, confident enough to believe that other people, you know, will will follow. And uh, it's actually why I, um, I started my uh, Twitter, Twitter mm -hmm. feed about a year ago, and I'm mm -hmm. up to uh, close to uh, about 1,900 followers. Mm -hmm. So, so that speaks to results. It does. It it's does. Significant yeah. ones. <laughs> Absolutely. I, you know, hey, you got to use my word. Got to use my word. I'm with so you. So let's let's talk a little bit about some of those things that you do. Your right. teaching. Yeah. Um, your blogging. You recently wrote an article that got a lot of exposure. What was the subject of that article? So it's actually a kind of a, a little window into the book that I'm writing, mm -hmm. and uh, the the, uh, the the blog is actually on how to build um, a brand in the digital age mm -hmm. and, and also specifically talking to entrepreneurs. So yeah, I, I actually checked so I would have the answer for you. It's about 1,225 wow. views in a month. So, but okay. it's on the Comcast business site and they have I think 10,000 mm -hmm. uh, followers. Okay. So, so that leads me to believe that perhaps I've actually, you know, I, I've, Clearly, I've touched on something that pe right. that resonates with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're in a space where you do a lot of listening. Um, we had breakfast mm -hmm. a few months ago, and we talked about the power of continuous learning. Yeah. And now you're kind of taking your ability to observe, mm -hmm. um, ask questions, and you're writing a book. Right. Tell tell us a little bit about what that process is like and. Is it worth it? Right. Is it worth doing? Well, I will let you know when I actually sell the book. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, well, where do you start with? Let's first find a publisher. Okay. We'll find a publisher. Okay. Then, when people buy it, then mm. I will let you know if it was successful. Okay. But okay. Um, the book, actually, I have been thinking about writing a book for five years, mm -hmm. and it's taken me this long to actually identify what is the book that I want to write. Mm -hmm. And because the last five years have just seen phenomenal change. Yeah. The book has changed with the culture and what's happening in the environment. Mm -hmm. And it's really, I think it's actually after our meeting that mm -hmm. it actually dawned on me. So thank you, Fran, yeah, for my helping pleasure. me actually <laughs> identify the book that I'm writing, which is mm -hmm. um, a lean marketing guide for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And my mm -hmm. goal with the book is actually to write a book that will be a companion piece to The Lean Startup, which is a book that mm. was written by Eric Ries in 2011. Yes, yes. very and, popular. And also mm -hmm. to add, I guess, to the Lean Startup movement that mm -hmm. was started by Steve Blank, um, mm -hmm. serial entrepreneur in uh, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley. So, um, and I've interviewed 20, 20 entrepreneurs mm -hmm. so far. And my goal is to interview 100. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been such a, a blast, really, mm -hmm. just hearing these mm -hmm. amazing stories. So if I could, can I share one of the stories Sure, with absolutely. You? I think that's powerful. So, yeah. um, and this is just, it's really stuck with me. I think I interviewed her last summer. Mm -hmm. um, so she is a, um, this is a young woman who's 14, who came out, who designed mm. a three-legged drinking cup for her grandfather who has Parkinson's. Oh, how cool. So that he wouldn't spill his drink while he was holding the cup. The power of three. Three Isn't that legs, something? like a right? stool. And it's called the kangaroo cup. Oh. And yeah. uh, she's out of Chicago. I actually mm -hmm. spoke both with her father, who of course is an entrepreneur as mm -hmm. well. Sure. And, um, and his daughter um, became, was actually nominated and won a CNN hero. Mm -hmm. of the year and ended up going to the White House and meeting President Obama. Wow. I mean, wow. how great is that? So that is great. I feel like I get to be, you know, the person who hears the stories and also is drawing them out of people. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's part of what I do in my consulting practice as well. I, you know, I like to, I just, I, I actually really want to hear what people mm -hmm. have to say. I think that's you a do. big part of you listening do. is it, you actually yes. want to hear what the answers are, you know? <laughs> And so talk a little bit more about how you balance your consulting practice right. with the teaching, the writing, mm -hmm. um, the working on the book, the public speaking. Right. Yeah. So, um, so when, I, you know, when I left that corporation, 
um, which will remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, when I left my job, what I did was I actually wrote myself a mission statement. Mm. And I had this idea that, even though I, by the way, had never done any public speaking before, mm -hmm. um, that that was going to be one of the pieces because public speaking is, in fact, how I get clients. Sure. So my sure. goal is to actually do a public speaking event at least once a month. Mm -hmm. uh, last month, I did five. Great. So Great. <laughs> this month I'm okay. doing one, and okay. I think I'm doing one in August and September. Okay. But that's okay. the goal. And then every time I do a public speaking event, uh, I get a client. So I actually mm -hmm. got two clients out of the five events mm -hmm. that I, where I spoke. Mm. Um, I, got I got two clients, mm -hmm. and I'm still working with them. So, um, yeah. And then the teaching I do, I, you know, I'm, I'm an adjunct. I'm not full-time. Mm -hmm. So I do that, you know, um, in bits and pieces, you mm -hmm. know. But mm -hmm. I teach at, uh, at Drexel in the Close on Entrepreneurship School. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I actually get to work with budding entrepreneurs. Right, right. So, so my both work ends life, of the spectrum. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's funny. I, I realize that with me and I, even without trying, somehow I've ended up where, you know, my work life, my interests, the book, everything is all connected and, ro and really revolves around entrepreneurship. And mm -hmm. I just really enjoy that a lot. So. Well, I know in branding, yeah. consistency is very That's important. That's true. That's true. And there are many of the viewers that ask questions about branding. Mm -hmm. So in some of the final minutes of this yeah. interview, what's a branding tip or that you mm. might leave with the viewers? Sort of an early statement around branding. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I know. An early Drum roll. statement. Dun, dun, oh my goodness. Dun, dun, dun. Well, you know, here's the thing. First of all, People often misunderstand what branding is. It is mm -hmm. not a logo. What? Yep. It is, a logo <laughs> is simply one piece of it. The logo is actually shorthand for your brand, and your mm -hmm. brand identity is the face of your business. Mm -hmm. If people realize that how important that was, they probably wouldn't be getting logos off the internet for $19.99. But okay. <laughs> that's my one first tip is hire a professional. Okay. Tip um, one. Right. But mm -hmm. the other piece is that it's not only about what you look like, but what you say. Mm -hmm. And what you say has to be consistent. That's why, you know, people don't realize that your elevator pitch, for me, you know, the, the process I've developed is all around, you know, getting to the elevator pitch, which is the last thing, which is funny. People start with the elevator pitch. And what mm -hmm. I look at is the elevator pitch is really sums up something that you truly believe at your core and mm -hmm. is an authentic aspect of what you do. And branding for me is being able to then tap into that authenticity mm -hmm. and then and then have it delivered across all social media mm -hmm. fronts and in your day-to-day con -day conversation and not mm -hmm. think of it as a pitch but really as an entry point into your brand. Mm. So given that, mm -hmm. <laughs> what is your elevator pitch? What is your right. message that you that is authentically you? Right. Um, it has taken me 15 years to come up with this one. Okay. <laughs> so Fair I enough. appreciate how hard this is. <laughs> So what I really say is that what I do is I develop, a, I develop messaging mm. that cuts through the noise. Mm. And if people look at me with that blank stare, then that I'll just identify someone who's not going to be a good client. Mm. However, mm -hmm. if pe most people who understand what that means understand that we are being overwhelmed. In fact, we are being messaged at a rate of roughly 12,000 messages a day, which is roughly 4 million a year. Um, wow. And 30 years That's ago. That's too much. <laughs> and, and just to put it in context, 30 years ago, that was 1,500. Okay. okay. So cutting through the noise is super important because it means that if you cut through the noise, you're actually heard. Mm. Powerful. Yeah, I you. do want folks to be able to get in touch with you. Okay. I've enjoyed working with you, and oh, we've you. done some My, really cool work well. together. Mine as well. Um, and where can folks find you? So I'm on. Uh, so my website is zewi.com. Very, mm -hmm. very simple. Um, but the way you spell your name is a little bit different. Z e e w y. Yes. Right. There's a whole story behind that. Maybe we'll do that at another. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's like okay. a whole other interview. Um, but um, and I'm also a very active on Twitter, and my mm -hmm. Twitter handle is at Orly Zewi. So very easy to find me. And my blog is also on my website, and I'm also mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. Um, so, yeah, and then if uh, people want to take a look at the Comcast article, it's on the uh, cbcommunity.com, I think. It's uh, okay. Comcast Community, yeah. Great. 
So. Well, Orly, it's been great. It's Thank been you. great having you on the show. It's been a pleasure. Um, a wonderful conversation, <laughs> as we always have. Yes. And thank you for taking time out of your day to be here. Thank you, Fran. Appreciate it. Yeah. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> so there you have it. Another significant story by a significant entrepreneur. Orly Zewi was my guest today. Please check her out on the web at zewi.com. And thank you for listening and watching Significant TV. Significant Stories by Significant Entrepreneurs. Check us out.